Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Here you are. Welcome to the Tessa Marie Show. And you thought I had disappeared. I was right here, just waiting to frighten you into coming. So, how are you doing, my dear Dawn? And how are you doing, my dear good woman? And how are all of you doing this evening? Let me put my glasses on so I can really read the name. Oh, Rosie, I am looking forward to. Hi, Debbie, to hearing about your wonderful night of learning. So here you are, and welcome to the Tessa Marie Show. And those of you who don't know me, I am Tessa Marie. So how are you tonight? Don't laugh. All of your family. So anybody laughing, you're laughing at your own relatives. So there you go. So this is an important evening for all of us. It's change. It's like we have... Hi, Donado. How are you? So it's like we have a choice. Do we? We have a choice. And sometimes we say we don't have a choice. I have to change. I have to do something. I have to break the mold. I have to change something because it's not working as I want it to be. So tonight's message is on change. And what I want to know, I want you guys to interact with me. Come on, people. Tell me something about it. We all seek change, right? We all have different times of our life. We say we don't like what we're going through, so we are going to seek change. We're going to change it. We're going to dump this boyfriend. We're going to quit this job. We're going to find this friend that we need to have a talk with her about her behavior. We need to change things a bit. So therefore, I decided to talk about change. So what I need to know, though, is have you ever felt a need to make a change? Tell me. Tell me what it is. Share with us. Because sometimes there's somebody else who's watching tonight who has to have a need to make a change. And maybe your little push will help them. Let me know if you have ever tried to change and what was your reason for changing. It could be simple. But you don't have to make it complicated. But I would love to interact with you tonight with the change. So Kathleen is here. Welcome, Kathleen. So make sure, guys, you know, it's, I look at the names there, it's on family. So you shouldn't be afraid to talk about change in your family. So what change have you done that you like? What change have you done that you really enjoy doing? Did you succeed? And if you did, what was the change? What, what was the change you made? And did you like it? Or did you wish for what was? Change is really, really, really funny. Because sometimes we wish for change and that's not the change we get. We get something else. So Donato is saying, every day be more and more proactive and productive. Yeah, but did you change? Rosie said, Rose said she exercised more and her weight. So that's a change. She puts more, ex more effort into exercising. How are you feeling, Rosie, about having done that? How are you feeling? And Donato, being more productive and positive, how has that been working for you? So I need to know, I want you to talk to me tonight. Let me know what you're feeling. And if you, if you succeed in, in that wonderful change that you went for, how was it? How was it? How was that change? Because I changed. I became bold and fearless as if I wasn't. I have a, me a mentor here tonight that will say that I contributed to her attitude because she does have an attitude. And she will say it's all my fault. So here I'm saying I became bold and fearless. I became, I don't care, I am woman and I am this and I did all of that. I just didn't care. I changed. I decided, you know what? I'm going to embrace this environment that I'm living in. I'm going to take it and push it to the limit and I don't care. Let the chips fall where they may. And that's how I made my change. What did Rose say? I need to work out and when I don't, I feel it. Of course you feel it. Of course you feel it when you don't work out. It's hard on your body because it's your mind. Your mind is telling the body we need to change. Your mind is talking to the subconscious mind of the body. The subconscious mind I keep saying is the body. Some people are questioning that. It is the body. When you start saying, I want to do something, it goes, yeah, right. Your customer just lying in bed till late. You get up and you sit here and you watch the TV. The first thing you do is to watch TV in the morning and now you want to change. You know, so there you are, hello, RT. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. You need to change, right? But the body is saying, no, I like it. That bed is warm. I face that. I get up at 5 in the morning, and I didn't used to. But when I realized what I wanted to accomplish, I changed. And man, do I like it. I enjoy it. And by noon, I have done mostly everything I want to do. The rest of the time is gravy. I love to write, so I go and I start writing. 
and I get into the zone of writing. I go for a walk, and you see now I'm doing lives on the walk. That's a change. I never did that before. And a friend dared me, and I said, okay, I'll take that there, and I'll do it. So what's your change? Tell me. Rose says her exercise. So what, what have you noticed, Rose, since you started committing to the change? What about you, Debbie and Kathleen? What about you guys? Let me know. Don Donato said more positive and more productive. That was the decision you made to, to move change. I just took change by the head. I grabbed it by the collar and I said, let's go. This girl is on fire and she wants change. She wants some magic and she's going to create it herself. And that was my idea of change. I didn't sit there and wait for somebody to come and do it because I soon found out nobody's coming. <laughs> nobody's coming to help us change what we want to change in our life. Nobody cares if we change or not. As a matter of fact, they like us looking the way we do. They like us behaving the way we do. So because we fit in the mold, we are part of the herd. We are not sticking out. And there's one young lady on here tonight. I shall not call her. She shall be nameless because she hasn't said boo yet. And she... Took so many, made so many big changes. And when she made the changes, people react and said, wow. And she's still going through that. And the other day she said to me, nobody understands us. <laughs> and I, all I could do was smile because nobody understands why I do this. You should hear the complaints I get from my friends. I don't see this. Some of them said to me, you're wearing too much jewelry. One lady said to me last night, show me how to wear jewelry. And I said to a friend, I should just spread the jewelry out and they would have to see what, they, what I have to contend with. I just do what I want. And I change that. I cannot wear it outside. We, look, we're under another lockdown. We are going anywhere this summer. So I have to wear my jewelry to come and talk to you. I have to change my style. I have to do what I have to do to be here. So you have to be the same. They're changing our life for us. So isn't it time we stepped in and changed? So change. Do something you like to do and then expect it to be great. Change is something we seek. Trying to improve our present circumstances. That is what the root of change is. Like if you want to exercise and lose weight, then you're changing. If you find you're not as positive as you want to be, you're changing. And you're changing the present so that you're in and making it better. So when you wake up tomorrow, you have a choice. That's change. Seekers, people that are constantly coming here, you're a seeker. A seeker has, wants to know more. A seeker wants to find better. A seeker wants to understand what's going on out there. The seeker is saying, I don't like what I'm surrounded with. I need to move it. I am not satisfied. So tell me about your change. Kathleen, I have to tune in here just to see you, which is a change for us. You're my child. And that's why you're talking to your mother. I have to tune in here just to see you, which is a change for us. Well, it's true because we don't see each other. I cannot see my daughter. And this one daughter of mine is special and I cannot see her. She's not more special than the other two, but they're equally special. And when they get here and they're in this house, the constant chatter never goes. The Catherine is not my daughter. She's my, my friend's daughter, but she was raised in that house. She knows how to eat all sorts of West Indian food from being in this house since she was about three or four. So she cannot see me. She comes and she cannot see me. She drops my, my um, Easter present on the porch. She drops Christmas present on the porch. I drop on the porch. And that's how we do it. And yet, that is, she had a change. She has to come here to see me. She couldn't see me. So she tunes in so that her daughter Monroe can see me. And, and Monroe has long legs and the other day Monroe had a problem. She's six and she and she and she her, her tights were not getting up where they should be. And I had to go to the risk of Monroe. I had that problem all my life because of the length of my legs. And she said, oh, okay, Grammy says. So now she understands. So we change. We have to do things to make life better. And we don't like where we are. We change. You said I am the most special, so I will remind the others. <laughs> My children. And when your brother comes on, it's another story. So anyway, what I would like you guys to do is, the, is to embrace change, seek change, and talk about it. What about you, Donato? You said you get your positive influence. I wonder who is pushing it down your throat. I would like to meet that person. And, and then, um, Rose, you talked about your change. Uh, Rita, you haven't said anything. It's always necessary, guys, to change in a drastic way. Sometimes 
you have to make the change and it's drastic. It's like cutting it off. And then you ha have you noticed when you make such a change, you go, ah, you exhale. Because that thing was weighing on you and you were walking around with a load and you need to know you must drop it on the ground. And you can't. And you're thinking of, if I do this, this person will say that, that person will say this, and this person will, will tell me I shouldn't have, and this person will say, yes, you, well, why did you do that? Do you realize the, 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 the situation, what you're going to cause? And I told my strong, beautiful daughters, the three of them, and I said to them, you change. You don't like it, you dump it and you find something else. Don't carry it into your future. So change is not taking something that is weighing on you, that is not giving you a chance to be you and carry it in your future. That is not what it is. Change is taking it and saying, I don't like this load anymore. It's keeping me back. Dump it. Hi, Yoko. So when you come across a change, I don't like where I am. I don't like this situation. I don't like how it's all about you do. I don't want you to ever make a change best based on somebody else's opinion. Because at the end of the day, they just make their opinion and they walk through like mist. M-I-S-T. It flows in, the sun comes out, and it flows out again. So when you make your change, make it based on yourself. Make it based on your needs, your wants, your desires, your passion, whatever it is. Make your change based on you. When you make a change based because, well, my mother, my sister, my this, my friend, my neighbors will think. I don't care what they think. Did you just know how surprised my neighbors were when, I, when they saw me outside in the garden in long dresses at the front, at the back? It was hilarious for some of them, but we don't care. Because people don't do that. People go to the garden and they look horrible. I go to the garden and I have to look like how I want to look. The mirror never lies. What you see is what you will always see. So one of the things you must remember to do is change because the change is for yourself and not for anybody else. When we go around changing for people, we're not living our true self. And you know what? Change not doing what you want to do. You will get, you'll gain weight. You'll be exhausted. You'll be sleepy. You will be. You won't eat properly, or you might eat too much, or you drink too much. The point is that you are not living your best life. And I come here every day to inspire you to live your best life, a life where you can choose to go on a vacation. That's what I. Let me tell you the life I want for you. I want you to have the best life, where you can live a fulfilled life, own your own home, have your own car go on an annual vacation and free of debt. That is a fulfilled life. So you have to change some things. That's why I have the pillars of fine of the five pillars of prosperity. One of them is financial, but it's physical, it's spiritual. It's also emotional and mental. What you're going to do, you do you fix those things to suit you. Stop fi fixing things to fix people. Let us stop fixing our lives so other people say it's okay. It's not okay. Their lives are more broken. Even in the Bible, it tells you, take the beam from your, from your eyes before you come to get the little star in mind. So when somebody comes and telling you what you should do, put something like that. That's why I read the Bible and scriptures and all these things. Because it is aligns with life. The person who's telling you, you should do this when you're changing or you shouldn't do that. Tell them to go mind their own business. Your life is none of their business. It's your decision, your choices, your change. And when you make the change, you will feel this thing that just releases you. It's like somebody just say, okay, give me that yoke you're carrying. And when they take it, you will feel better. And you can stand up on your own to fit. That is what it is. Change is yours. So those of you who have done something drastic, and taking a nice piece of change. Tell me about it. Let's have a chat about it. Let me see what Kathleen said. Change is addictive. Once you change one thing, then I have to change 10 more. Well, well, we know that. We know that's what happens with change. You, should, you know that. But at the end of the day, Kathleen, it is your choice. It is your personal choices. So I agree with you. Once you change something, I don't like it. I'm, I'm not going to wear it. I'm not going to listen to it. Like my 22 months old granddaughter, when they put something on an Alexa 
according to her. She doesn't call it Alexa. She calls it Alexa. And she goes, no. That's what she can say. No. She cannot tell you what she wants, but she tells you that one, I don't want it. And she's not two years old yet. So why we hardbacks cannot do that? Why can't we not say, no, we are changing what we have right now. It's not good. We are returning it. Return to sender. Take it back. Send it back to Amazon. I don't know where you got it, but wherever you got it, return it. You don't like it, change it. Change it for what you like. Change your attitude for the person you want to be. Change your response to this person you want to be. Rather than swallow it, you are, I don't swallow. When I go somewhere, I don't want to be there. I quickly looked whoever I came with and I said, we have to go. We just have to go. <laughs> just like this. And Or I just say, I have to go. I forgot. I have to go. Because I, that is a waste of time, guys. We have arrested. Look at this. We wasted one year of just, I don't know what we did. And luckily for some of us, we could sneak in and do things. No, I'm planting a garden in a few weeks. And all of my wonderful grandchildren, when they come to pick their tomatoes, I have to hide or do whatever. I don't know. But it's changed. So change what is happening to you that you don't like. Because we have so few things that we can actually change for ourselves. They make big rules, it affects us. And we live within that. But if while we're in that box of rules they made for us, we can change, let's change something. Let's do something drastic. Change it if you don't like it. It is always necessary to change. A drastic change can be good or it can be bad. But then the point is that you know it's not good, do you? Rather than wonder if it's going to be good. I laugh at what frightens me. I laugh when I do something and it's wrong. I laugh when I do something and it's not what I should have done. And I find out, I go, oh, well, oh, Sarah, Sarah. I laugh at it because I cannot change it anymore. So I, there's no point I sit here and do anything about what I cannot change. But you can change some things. You can change what you do. And if you don't like it or where you are or how you're acting or how you're behaving, you can change it. And it all rests on one set of shoulders, yours, not on anybody else. You know, sometimes when you make a change, it can it will reveal things about people around you. You will suddenly find out, uh oh, so that's how you really felt. That's how you thought about me. So change is something that once you do it, you're going to start a ball rolling. Like Kathleen said, she finds she has to do 10 changes because all of a sudden I, I can see the clearly now, you know, this, the, the rain has stopped, the sun is shining. Now that I move this thing from here, I can see that. So that's what I mean. Rose can, talks about her exercise program. And she knows she must do it first thing in the morning, but um, sometimes she's, oh, I'll do it later. But we had one this week about the things you hate to do. That's the thing you do first. So the change you want to make, step into it and make that change because nobody's going to fix it for you if you don't like it. If you don't like where you're sitting on this place, you're sitting right now, you have to say, well, no, this seat is uncomfortable. I don't want to be here. Where can I sit that is comfortable? And this is what you have to do. So let me see what you guys are doing. So let me see what... So Yoko and Donato were just saying hello to each other. Yoko, you made a big change. You came to Canada from, from Japan. Tell us about the change, a decision to make that change. How did you feel? It was frightening. I remember you said your mother and your parents didn't want you to go because you couldn't speak the language, but here you are. Like I say in the morning, here you are, Yoko, here you are. Debbie, I'm sure there were changes you made. So we have all gone through that. And the question is, get engaged in making your own change. Don't wait for somebody you know or somebody you care about to make the change for you. That does not count. Because that person is inflicting their standards, their quality on you, and that is not your change. Change is often difficult, you know. But when you make a change, sometimes it is very satisfying. And that change, though, can rock your boat. The change I made last summer to get involved in doing this has rocked my boat. I've never gone through so much challenges with it. But at the end, I notice I am getting better and I don't, I mean, my, I think my key word is I don't care. 
So I get up, then I change, and I do this thing. I change doing it in the night. I do it in the morning. I do, I'm changing all the time. It's a constant evolving. You, you change from where you are to where you want to be, seeking to be better. Seeking something that is more satisfying, that gives you a little bit of encouragement to say it's okay. We cannot live life in a straight line. What was good last year, it looks like it's not going to be good this year. So what do you do about it? You change it. Let's, you know, so talk about a little bit of change with people. Let them understand. Because when you change, it can affect your health, which it always does. You might suddenly get better. There was, there's this lady that made a big change. It was a huge change. And she had blood pressure, was on blood pressure medication. And, you know, she, <laughs> she said to me, I was just, you know, I'm looking at the situation. My family is there. Everybody's adult. Nobody's moving out. I am in the kitchen. I'm cooking day in and day out. I'm always cooking for somebody. And then she said to me, and she's, <laughs> she lived in England and she was from Greece. And she said to me, one day she decided, she didn't say anything because they don't care. So she said, I'm going to Greece. And she said, it's like they didn't hear her. So she said, I wanted a change because nobody's doing anything. And she said to them, I am going to Greece. They didn't take her on. They didn't take her seriously. So off to Greece she went. And she said, I don't know when they missed me, when they found out. But she said, I know where I was. I needed to change. And then she said, I went to Greece, Santa Marie, and I had a year to, to die for. She said, I had an affair, I had so much fun, I had good food, and I came back to England, and I told them I'm back, and I'm not staying, I'm going to Canada. And I met her on the and forth, she was at my studio, and she told me the story about this, and I'll never forget this. She said, nobody paid attention to me in that house, I was dismayed. She said, I left, and I heard they were looking for me, but I went for one year, and then I decided I am not going to stay there, I'm going to go to Canada. And she said, I left them in England and I went to Canada and here I am, I have a brand new life. And that was drastic change. But at the end, she, she said she would, that was the happiest decision she ever made for herself. So you can make some real big changes. But what I would like to leave you with tonight is to know you have, <laughs> you have the ability to change yourself. Nobody's holding you. On, 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 on something that is turning around and each time you hit your foot hits a spike and it cuts. Nobody is doing that to you. Those two legs, they can go wherever you want them to go. The nuns had told us when we went to school, study and try to get into university. This, they wanted this group of girls, at least I'm talking about my time with the grade, grade 10, which is form 4. And they said to us, she would go because in those days, they, 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 they would, the Protestants ran things and they would mark the Catholic school's um, result, test results harder. So what they did, when you got into grade 10 and you had to go to a grade 13, which is the A-levels, what they would do for you is get you to write the grade 13 exam as a, as a rehearsal or preparation in grade 10. And based on that, they had the old exams. I don't know how these women did that, but nuns are very ingenious. And we wrote the exam in 10. We had two more years to go. We had two, three more years to go. So every year we wrote that exam. So when we passed, if they took grades because we were Catholics, we got, we still passed. So they prepared us for that. And then she said, you must have the diploma on the wall. And if the marriage is not working, <laughs> and she said, you pick up the children underneath your arms and you grab your diploma on the wall and that's all you need. Everything else you can replace. You need to prove you're educated. So you take the diploma, you take the children and you set out on your own. Change. Because the situation is not working for you. And these were nuns who had never been married. So you can imagine the kind of thing I think about. When I want to change, I make it. Sometimes I don't even tell my children or my whoever. I just, I, I don't like it. Mom, did you do that? Yes, I did. Why did you do that? Because I can. Mom, where are you? I'm, on, I'm in a mountain somewhere. Mom, really? That the best thing you could do? Yeah, because I thought it was great. And that is how you have to do. Make the change that will make your life more interesting. It's your life. The drastic change like that lady did from England to Greece, Greece to Canada, 
and live a life and, and was born to say I had an affair and I didn't care because nobody paid attention, but she didn't like where she was. So your idea is remember, nobody's going to come to rescue you. You have to change, and you, like Gandhi said, in a longer form, you become the change you want. You create that change for yourself. And then the second thing you have to remember is that you are not responsible for you. Once you make that change, don't go back and say, this person caused me to make the change. Nobody caused you to do anything. Take responsibility for what you've done. You will feel better. You'll be more confident. You'll be stronger. And you will be clear. You'll have clarity. So number one is make the choice because nobody else is making it for you. And if they do, you won't like it. And you will still request change. When you change, accept it. Don't look back. Walk forward. It cannot be worse than where you were. And if it is, so what? Change that too. Then in the third one, when you get to that point and you want the change and you have won the change you want in one, w -A -N, because it's a game, and you sit there in the change and somebody comes and tells you that change you made is now so difficult. That change you made is making you, if you had stayed, you would do that. If you had stayed in that man, you would have a pension because he died last week. Oh, so who cares? You're going to make your own pension. That is what somebody will tell you. But when you take the, re the responsibility to change, accept it. Sit in the new you, the new place you are in. Sit in there and say, I am okay. It might have bumps. The bed might not have been as comfortable. But guess what? It's your bed. And you are living the life you want to live. So change is taking the step because no one is going to help you. Don't look back thinking that, well, you know, it's because of that person I changed. No, you changed because you figure that you were worthy of more and better. And when somebody tells you what happened in the past that you could benefit on today, it doesn't matter. Because you are going to benefit from having the strength, the determination, the courage, and the persistence to hold on and to try. So change is important. And I'm glad some of you shared, Rosie and Kathleen and Donato and Debbie, and all of you came tonight because it really was a wonderful time to talk about change because we are so limited of what we are able to do these days. But the change you can do for yourself, just, you know, talk about it. Let's talk about it. And what I'm asking every night is for you guys to get involved with the conversation. Interact with me. Talk to me about the things, you know, that when I bring it up, tell me what you think. And go back online and go back and see it and then put a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Because what I'm trying to do to you is to inspire you to, be, to live a more fulfilled life. A more fulfilled life is maybe the life where you own your own home. You have an, your own car. You can go on an annual vacation or more and you're debt free and you still have income coming in. So that's my job is to make you enjoy those four or five things that are so important. And I'm not telling you you should, you can pick one or two from it. What I'm saying to you is what I did. The changes I made enabled me to live the life, a more fulfilled life, a life that I am following through the five pillars of prosperity. And it's an amazing life. So when I invite you here is come join me on this, on my journey. You will never have a lovelier ride, a more inspired time. So make the change you want. Talk to me about it and let us see what we can do. And not, another thing is, get, a, get there in a topic. Push a topic. And as I said last night, and I'll keep saying it until you guys find me somewhere to speak. On Zoom, I can't go now. It's Zoom or Face, whatever they do. So I'm going to be asking you guys every night to get an opportunity for me to have a talk with people. You can bring a group of two, three, or five together and say, talk and tell me to talk to them about something you have heard. Inspire somebody else. And I'm willing to do that because my, my job is to inspire you every day. So tonight you have changed. Sit and think about it. And one of the things I want to bring up for you guys is to remember your journal and your gratitude journal. Don't forget it. I should maybe be mentioning it at least once a week or once a month so that you can keep on it. This is a new month. Today is the first. So think of five things today that you are grateful for. Five things you were able to press the button and come on Instagram live. That you ate today, you danced today. 
You heard me today. Your five senses are working. Find five things you can be grateful for. You don't, if you don't want to write it out, spit it out. Say it out loud. But live your best life and to live the best fulfilled life you can. And whatever it is, if you have to have a glass of wine, then have a glass of wine. If after you have the glass of wine you want to sleep, then go to sleep. Apparently the world is going to keep spinning on its axis whether you drink a glass of wine or not. Or whether you fall asleep after. So this is what I wanted to express to you guys. I'm so happy for you guys that are here. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you that are here. And, and take something out of tonight. You know something I noticed? Everybody's giving pearls and nuggets and diamonds now. Every time I look at a life, did you get a, a nugget? I'm going, really? So everybody has told me our nuggets. But I have a few. I have some that are really nice. And I have some black pearls. I got it on the Pirates of the Caribbean when I was a pirate. <laughs> and I still have them. And I'm handing them out one by one. And I have some pink Canadian diamonds that I'm giving to. So join me so that we can go on this journey and have a fulfilled life. And enjoy all our pearls and our diamonds and make changes and create new ones. And, you know, just have a great life. So have a wonderful time tonight. And I'll see you guys again. Tomorrow is Good Friday. I'll do one. I'll do one a little bit. I don't know. I'll see what, I'll see what, it, what comes. So I'll see you tomorrow morning for your morning blessing and tomorrow night and we'll see what it is. And join us so you can, I can celebrate Easter with you and tell you happy Easter. So take care and thanks for coming. Thanks Kathleen for visiting me. Bye guys. Bye Donato. Uh, Rosie, Debbie, Aria, all of you guys who dropped in. Have, and Dawn, Dawn was there too. Dawn, have a wonderful time. I didn't, I missed you at first, Dawn. I'm sorry. And I apologize. You were so great to come. Thank you. Bye, guys.